In this video you will find out if it's humanly possible to learn a new language in seven days. Let's go! So as one of the founders of Speakly, I have this awesome privilege to be surrounded by languages every single day and more so to be surrounded by awesome polyglots who speak so many languages that you can't even imagine. It's so inspiring to have conversations with those people, uh, conversations like this, or conversations like this, or this one here, uh, that you can check out yourself as well. I put the links in the description of this video. And having those conversations with these polyglots, I discover more and more that they are not, you know, superhuman entities that you know they have some super special skills that nobody else have they have just invested a lot of time into learning languages and they are using very specific smart techniques to approach language learning all that said we arrived to the topic of today's video which is all those people on youtube claiming that they are learning a language in seven days videos like this one here or this one here, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, or even this one that claims that they learn language in 24 hours. So my goal for today's video that I want to share with you is to get to the bottom of this, are these people actually learning language in seven days or is there something else that we need to talk about? So to start off, you may know that we had a pretty exciting experiment together with the polyglot Richard Simcott uh, to test out how much Estonian can he study uh, in a 30-day challenge. So basically he studied Estonian for 30 days, every day, for three to four hours, and Basically, in the end of the challenge, he went to Estonian live TV, you know, without any preparation. Uh, people in the Estonian national uh, broadcasting asked him questions and they had a little chat. So let's take a look how he did. Nice on uh, Macedonia's Peras. Yeah, my own Britpere. Yeah, oli oli velma oli vega huvitas. Uh, 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 so this was Richard speaking Estonian after learning it for 30 days in Speakly, which is a very efficient language learning tool, teaching you only the most statistically relevant words and sentences that you need for real life conversations. Um, also, we need to take into account that Richard is basically like an Olympic athlete. He already has different skill sets in about 30 languages. So his foundation for language learning is so awesome that it doesn't compare to any of us and most certainly it doesn't compare with all those youtubers i was showing you previously so we arrived to the first conclusion and a bunch of questions if richard who studied three to four hours every single day taking into account all his knowledge in languages and um, you saw that his level was basically something like an a2 um, and beginning of B1 from the European language map perspective, meaning that, yeah, he can express himself, he even understood little slang words and stuff like that, but he really needs to think about putting together words into full sentences, and it takes a little time, which is super normal. By the way, Estonian is one of the most difficult languages in the world as well, and that's why it's especially superhuman what Richard did in those 30 days because he literally was able to have a conversation <laughs> on live TV in Estonian. So if Richard would have gone to the TV show uh, after seven days of studies, 
he wouldn't have been able to do the interview. I'm pretty sure that he would be the first to say that uh, based on our conversations. Um, so we see the first thing happening here that people who are claiming that they, st- that they learn a language, even on that basic level, that I have basic conversations, um, seem to say that they are better than the most renowned polyglot alive today, uh, which I would say Richard Simcott is. Now, let's set some additional context here. Uh, Let's look into history to find out if there have been people in history who have been able to study um, languages in a way that they would actually be able to manage basically all kinds of real life situations in seven days. So there are many famous polyglots in history. Obviously, we won't cover them all, but I will just bring out a few of them. So the two examples that I'd like to give you uh, are John Baring, who claimed to understand um, at least 200 languages and speak 100. Nobody knows for sure, right? Uh, and the second person is Georges Dumézil, who was such an awesome person that there are many uh, people claiming that he had a pretty much active knowledge um, in 200 languages, many of them very small languages as well. uh, But even still, there are no documentation related to how fast these people learn languages. But what we can see based on research is that the more languages you know, the easier it gets to learn new ones. Uh, So for those people like Richard Simcott, who has like 30 languages in various levels um, in his arsenal, or Georges Dumézil, who has this in a such a high level, 200 languages as his foundation, they would study languages faster, of course. But we need to take into account that that's the variable here. They have so many languages already in their knowledge that they would study faster because of that. But people who don't have this, they just are not capable of learning languages that fast. Now, let's look at another example of uh, somebody who is really inspiring uh, for me as well, uh, somebody who we had this podcast here that you can also listen to, by the way, uh, and that's Lindy Boats. She also speaks loads of different languages. And what we basically discussed with Lindy in this speaking podcast was that she also doesn't learn languages in seven days. It's not humanly possible for her to reach any reasonable level. And this is coming from a person who speaks actively, I think, more than 10 languages. I'm I'm not sure in this number because uh, Lindy is a very cool and modest person. She doesn't brag about her language skills at all. Uh, but in this video here that you can see on the screen at the moment, I attached also the link into the description you can see her speaking in many different languages and very high level. Now, why was I referring to all these polyglots when we are trying to figure out if it's possible to learn a language in seven days? Um, There is one crucial aspect in all of it, and it's the question of how fast can you actually remember so many words and sentences that you would actually be able to cover most real life situations. Many people would say their understanding of learning a language is much wider than mine, for example. They would say that they need to be able to you know, read books in a language. I don't believe that because our research in Speakly actually shows that if you know already around 1200 most common words of a language, you can cover about 70 plus percent of any real life situation. So it's a question of actually knowing these words and being able to put them into phrases. And that's what's crucial here to understand as well when we talk about learning language that quickly, like in seven days. And I was mentioning this before a little bit very quickly. It's called the mnemonic effect. Now, the mnemonic effect in its core is something very, very simple. And the theory says that if you want to remember something efficiently, you have to link it 
in your mind with something that you already know. So I'm giving an example in this little Speakly podcast clip uh, that you can check out right away. Uh, let's take an example in Icelandic, for example. I would like to study the just the word I. Uh, it's yeah. It's you know, it's just a weird thing. But when you just think consciously about that, it's kind of like ich in German. Then it's right. it, then it's a mnemonic technique uh, all of a sudden, and then you will be remembering it um, mm. in a in a in a in a in a weird way, or then making another mnemonic technique, thinking that okay, it's kind of yeah, it's it's written like e and g. It mm-hmm. kind of uh, kind of looks like an the word egg. So just mm. making a little kind of connection in your brain that in in Estonian it's a fun uh, word game as well. Uh, egg is Muna and I is Mina, so it's it's very similar. Oh, so you make these little games in your how brain. How interesting! <laughs> in your yeah, brain. I can see where you're thinking. <laughs> going, yeah. And then you then you have mm. a mnemonic technique. Now, why am I talking about mnemonic techniques? These are awesome techniques to remember words faster and better. But what it's crucially important here in this context is that for people who have many languages already in their arsenal, mnemonic techniques actually happen automatically. Don't, they don't need to do anything about it. Now, in the case of somebody so um, highly educated in languages like Richard Simcott, this happens almost automatically. It means that he has so many languages in his language foundation that if he throws in a word or a sentence into this kind of jungle of languages, then it will find mnemonic techniques by itself and it will memorize faster. But if you don't have this fertile ground created yet, then it's very, very difficult to make your memory take in uh, new information in such a rate that you would have like 1200 most common words and sentences in seven days. I'm sure that some memory expert out there would be able to do it somehow with very specific techniques, but as a sustainable way of how to start speaking the language, I don't believe that. It takes about three months to really build the foundation of language that you could cover all kinds of situations. So you've arrived so far into this video that I just wanted to say thank you and to leave you with this uh, little applause and this gift to uh, cheer you up. So before we continue, just let's take a moment uh, for, the, uh, for the cheers. Now, we'll arrive to the second part of the video in which we look at three different topics. Number one, how fast can your brain actually take in the language? Which is a very crucial question. Number two, why are renowned polyglots not learning languages in seven days as these YouTubers are? And number three, the most crucial question, (laughs) are these YouTubers actually learning a language? Even in a very narrow sense of being able to cover, let's say, 50% of real life situations in seven days. Now, let's arrive to the first question. How fast can our brains actually take in a language? Here we obviously have to talk about different difficulty levels of languages as well. They are not all created equal. So here on the screen at the moment, you can see the usual distinction between the difficulty of languages. Obviously, these are just examples, but they give you a little overview of, you know, of how different languages might group. So just for the sake of argument, because we are trying to find out if it's possible to learn language, even in a very narrow <laughs> uh, meaning, in seven days, let's assume that we are talking about the languages in group one, the more simple languages like Spanish and French and Italian. Now, there's a lot of research related to how fast can you actually learn a language. You know, it's done in universities, it's done in you know independent organizations, and there is such a thing as the European language map as well, which you know pretty much projects of how fast can you actually learn a language. And this is all done based on traditional methods, you know, going to the classroom with the teacher and using the language learning manual, which has its own issues, as you probably know if you follow um, our content. But research on these traditional methods shows that getting to a reasonably good fluency level in group one languages like French and Spanish and so forth would take 480 hours. 
So if you study one hour per day, simple math will give us the value. It will take 480 days, which is about 16 months. Um, now, that doesn't seem to be very quick and it's not very close to the seven days of <laughs> where we want to arrive to. Now, I told you that this was research done on traditional methods. Now, what we have done in the past seven years in Speakly is really researching thousands of users as well and really seeing what kind of words and sentences they are using in real life conversations. And we have found out that to really reach similar levels so that, you know, I can express myself in most real life situations with Speakly for group one languages, it would take around three and a half to four months to do so. If you study around half an hour per day, of course, there would be this logical notion that maybe I can study more. Maybe I can study 10 hours per day. What would happen then? Now, this is a common misconception. I hate this so much because people ask me this all the time as well. Like, okay, if Speakly says that I can get to a very good kind of speaking level in my daily life in, let's say, 65 hours of study, then if I study three days in a row, you know, I'm already surpassing this. So, you know, why am <laughs> this is so bad? I can't even talk about this because, you know, we need to understand that for our brains, a good study pace is not more than, you know, 10, 15 new words every single day. And, and here we're talking about normal learners, like people who have a job, who, you know, have kids, they have their everyday lives as well. They can't study. 10 hours per day. And it's also not advisable to do so. You know, it's such a bad idea to just start learning three hours per day, and then be overwhelmed and then have a big pause in the middle of your studies. What we can see based on research, again, and years and years of research is that people who study around 10 words every single day, and are consistent in their studies are actually reaching the most consistent results as well. Because you know, their brain can handle with all the new information, they will have time to do their daily listening and so forth. So the notion that, oh, I will study today like 100 words and tomorrow again 100 words, it's faulty. Uh, that's not how our brains pick up information. And again, it's important to make a distinction between somebody like a Lindy Boats or a Richard Simcott and a usual language learner, you know, their memories are so full of languages that they can cope with all this information if they study like four hours per day. So in the beginning of this video, I showed you a little clip of Richard Simcott uh, speaking Estonian after his Estonian challenge with Speakly, uh, where he learned um, like three, four hours every single day with Speakly and how he spoke Estonian, right? So he's like an Olympic athlete, literally in language learning. And what he did basically during these 30 days is that he amassed together a vocabulary of around 1200 most common words and sentences in his own words. That was kind of like a nice uh, beginner level so that he would be able to go to the, you know, Estonian state language exam and crush the A2 language exam, for example, uh, which is totally reasonable uh, as a foundation of a language. And in his case, one could actually say that in, an, in a very narrow way, Richard learned Estonian language in 30 days because he was able to express himself um, in a live TV show. And that's the way, by the way, how the Estonian National Broadcasting Agency also portrayed it. The title of his uh, clip was a British person learned Estonian in 30 days uh, in a month. Uh, look how he did something like that. So in in their perception, uh, also, it was learning a language. So so we can make a little conclusion here that an Olympic athlete in language learning, <laughs> like, like Richard Simcott, was able to bring himself to a learned a language level uh, in the eyes of native speakers uh, in a TV show by learning like three, four hours per day, which is an awesome result. But we have to take into account that he's basically like one of the most renowned polyglots out there today. <laughs> Now let's get to the second point. Uh, why are the world renowned polyglots uh, not learning languages in seven days? Because it's 
just not doable. Again, we can argue about what is learning a language, but I think a pretty good kind of baseline is something that we already figured out in the previous point. That said, all these awesome polyglots that I'm communicating with are pretty adamant about not being able to learn languages that quickly. And we could see this very, very clearly uh, in the case of this challenge that Richard Simcoe did with, with Estonian uh, as well. And even though group one languages like Spanish and French are easier uh, in seven days uh, still, it doesn't uh, happen even uh, with those awesome language learners. Are all these YouTubers that I was showing you actually learning a language in seven days? And the answer is no. And we have all, you know, memorized poems in schools. And for a video like this, it's super easy to just memorize a bunch of lines, speak fast and slowly in all kinds of ways. But in no way is it real language skills that you can cover most real life situations with. So what you should take away from this video is that please ignore all those videos where somebody says that they learned something in seven days, they achieved something in 24 hours. These things don't work like that. Most certainly these things don't work um, like that in language learning. 